Okay, in this video, I want to give you an alternative uh, presentation strategy that you can use when you're presenting to homeowners. Now, you've already gone through the owner's choice analysis spreadsheet in the previous videos. Now, this is a new strategy that we're uh, just trying out, just testing out, because, and the reason why uh, is because a lot of the homeowners that we're talking with even though we prove to them and we show them they're making more money by uh, going with op choice two or choice three, they're so fixated in on the actual selling price more so than they are the profit. So what I've decided to do is to alter the strategy slightly, but basically ending up in the same place as far as the profit potential is far as how much money that you can make. So what I'm going to do, this is just an add-on or alternative strategy. I'm not going to go through the entire sheet. You've already done that in the, the previous videos. What I'm going to do is just show you a different strategy and just focus on two or three different things within the sheet itself. Now this is a different example from the one that uh, you previously watched, but just think about don't think about the numbers as much as the overall strategy, okay? So we're going to start right here with the actual estimated future sale price. You can see 416 today, 36 months, 2.5% appreciation, 447, 987. So the strategy here is that when you ask the homeowner if your home is worth 447, 987 three years from now, what is the bottom line number that you will take for your home? So in this example, the homeowner were to say 440000 is the bottom line they would take for their home if it was worth that much today. So what I do is actually put that number in option one, option two, and option three. So because that is the number that he has said he's willing to take, so we're going to put that in, giving the homeowner exactly what they want. It's, it's much harder to uh, argue at the end of the presentation. It's much harder to argue that they're not getting the purchase price or they're so fixated in on that purchase price. So let's just eliminate that right, out, right from the beginning and just give them exactly what they're asking for. So then we scroll down and the monthly income remains the same here in option two. In option three, I always like to go $200 less. If you choose the $200 less, it enables you to be able to give them something back a little bit later on. So just keep that $200 uh, per month uh, at the top of your mind and just bear in mind that we're doing this over 36 months. So $200 times 36 months is $7,200. So that's going to come into play a little bit later on. So we're going to say that we'll give them $2,000 $2, a month, and the reason being we're going to offer them the guarantees that if the tenants don't pay, we pay, all of those um, all of those things. So it's worth and There's no vacancy. So it's worth that to them to pay $200 a month less. Now, they may be fixated on that $200 a month because – it may not cover their principal interest taxes and insurance and all their operating costs. So if, the, for example, this number were to be in the red or negative or if that $2,000 didn't even cover their, their mortgage and their taxes and their insurance, you know, it may, be an audit, it may not be enough. But one thing, like I said, is that $200 per month is a bargaining tool for a little bit later on. So let's just go with the $2,000 a month. You can see here uh, in option number two, we put in the $14,997 uh, service fee or implementation fee or consulting fee, whatever you want to call it. Now the strategy in number three is that, yes, we're going to give them the, the, their purchase price, but what we're going to do is we're going to assign a fee as well, but we're not going to assign it up front. We're going to assign the fee at the close. 
So you can see what I've done here is I've entered into enter, enter, entered in a fee of thirty thousand dollars. So basically, my mindset or my strategy is if it's fifteen thousand dollars to do it all up front, it's going to be another fifteen thousand dollars to do it all at the back end to close everything at the back end. Now, if you recall in the previous videos that typically we charge $200 a month for management fees for every month of the term. So $200 a month times 36 months is $7,200. So right now, the $7,200 is because I've taken $200 a month off here. Now, if the owner balks at the at the $2,000 a month and they want to go to $2,200 a month, I will do that, but what I'm going to do is collect it at the back end. So then I'm going to increase this to $3,700. So that's why I always like to go $200 a month less here to start with. And because then I can, if I add it in back there, I'm going to add it in here as well and make sure that I collect the money. So I'm just going to put it back to $2,000 and $30,000 and So what this means is when you sell the home, you're going to collect your fee of $30,000 off the purchase price of the home. What I'm also going to do, go back up to the selling price, is this is the amount that I'm going to purchase the home from the homeowner. However, in the contracts with the tenant buyer, I'm going to sell the home. It's I estimate it to be worth $447,987. I'm going to sell that home to the tenant buyer for $448,000 or $449,000. I'm going to still make sure that there's a spread here between these two numbers. So this larger number is what I'm going to actually going to sell the home to the ho tenant buyer for, and this is what I'm going to purchase the home from the homeowner for, just to make sure that I still have a little bit of a spread because that's profit margin there as well. So in this example, that is almost $8,000 difference right there. So it, that $8,000 is just as good in your pocket as it is the homeowner or the tenant buyer's pocket. So, so there's an eight grand that you just picked up right there. There's $200 a month times 36 months. So there's $7,200 that you picked up right there. So that alone is 15 grand. And here is another $30,000. So right now, so you're at about $45,000 to do this deal. So then we scroll down and you can see that the numbers are pretty much consistent with what they are uh, had you gone with the other strategy. This number obviously is the highest, this number is the second highest, this number is the third highest, and this number is the lowest. So in this scenario, for example, the difference between option two and option three, the monetary difference, the profit difference to the homeowner is roughly around the same as it would be in the, in the, the other strategy that you've, all, that you've already learned. The difference being that you're giving the homeowner exactly what he wants as far as the purchase price. So his mind set on being fixated on getting that purchase price, you've taken that away from him because you're giving him exactly what he says he wants here. If he be then becomes too fixated on the monthly, just change it to 2200 and then go down here to change this to 37 200 and your justification is you know you need to if you're going to give it to them here you're going to collect it back at the end and you could justify it actually by collecting back more because this is not a guaranteed money if if you go through this process and the person the tenant buyer does not buy the property this money here you're never going to recover so what you're going to get actually is this monthly option consideration from the tenant buyer and the initial down payment, the $13,000 plus the $8,750.
So it's up to you what you want to do. If the homeowner is balking and wants that $2,200, maybe instead of doing the exact same here, you charge $300 a month or whatever it is that you want to charge to collect it back because it's money that you're not going to get unless you actually the tenant buyer buys a property or you find an investor to purchase the property or you or you sell it to somebody else. So this is uh, future money. So present money is typically not worth as much as future money. So if I'm going to give up $200 today, you know, I want a chance of making more money in the future. So this may be you want $300 a month, which goes to 96 or nine. $9,600 for three years, so that would be 39600 And you can still see that this number is higher than this number. The spread is pretty tight there. There's only an $8,000 $8, difference. The spread between these two is $28,000. So typically, typically the spread here, um, you know, is usually under $30,000 between these two here. Is you'd like to keep it under $30,000. So in this scenario, the way it is right now, uh, how much money are you going to make is probably what you're asking. Uh, I'm just going to quickly run through it. So you have a spread here of $8,000. You're going to collect the initial option money as well as the monthly option credit. However, those two items here, the 8750 and the 13000 they will actually, you're getting that money all along, but uh, it's going to be deducted from the $39,600. So you are going to get the 13000 up front, you are going to get the 8750 every single month. So you are going to get a portion of this $39,600, but the way you present it to the homeowner is you're only going to get this money if and only if you buy the property. So you're taking the gamble and doing all of, basically you're telling them you're going to do all the work for free, you're going to do all the work up front, and if you do not buy the property or the tenant buyer does not close on the property, you basically have just walked away from your fee of $40,000. You've done this work for them for for nothing, they've got exactly what they wanted. They've got the four four hundred forty thousand. They've got the twenty two hundred dollars a month. You've worked for three years, and really, during that three year time frame, you've made the thirteen thousand plus the eight thousand seven hundred fifty dollars. So you have made some money. Uh, but when it time when it when it comes time to close on this deal, you are not going to get the thirty nine thousand six hundred at the end. You're going to get this minus these two items. Um, because you've already collected that money from the tenant buyer. So it's just a different way of uh, presenting it to the homeowner because there are some people that are struggling with um, asking the homeowner to take, say, in this scenario, $416,000 here because they're so fixated on – I'm just going to – change these numbers back to what they would be in a normal scenario. They're so fixated on getting their price. So yeah, so here they getting $70,000 or so. It's pretty close to um, let me, normally we would do this would be higher as well. So it's pretty close to um, the profit margin in this one is pretty close to what it was before. You're just presenting it in a different way. And what we're doing is removing obstacles from the homeowner. So the more obstacles or what they tell us are obstacles is you're not giving me enough money here or I want fair market rent. Okay, just remove those obstacles. But at the end of the day, you still have to get paid. I mean, they have no problem paying a realtor $17,200 to do one transaction, which is sell their house. So here you're going to need to do two transactions, plus you're going to need to manage the property for uh, the duration of the term. So that's worth at least double that. 
So that's your justification for the for the fees. So try that out, uh, meeting with the homeowner. Try giving them exactly what they ask for in the presentation. Like I said, start with the $200 less here and go with the $30,000 here or whatever number it is. $30,000 is just the number that I'm using because I'm wanting $15,000 here for, a, for the uh for doing all of the work up front. Obviously, I offer other services such as a $5,000 consulting fee where basically I help them out for over the phone and uh, you know do a, a one or two hour, uh, spend one or two hours with them. Plus, we'll do up the autofill contract service for $5,000 or we'll do the whole thing for $15,000. So in this scenario, I would want $30,000 to do the whole thing. And as you can see, we're at $70,942, and you're going to make the same amount of profit. So it's just a different way, a different approach to analyzing the deal, meeting with the homeowner, and presenting the information. So I hope this was valuable. I hope that uh, if you were struggling previously, getting the homeowner to commit and say yes, hopefully this new strategy will help you out and, be, and you'll be able to close on more deals.